United States of America, God certainly shed his grace on thee. There has never been a nation like it, one founded on biblical principles, built by men and women who honored the God of the Bible. It cannot be emphasized too clearly and too often that this nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. Not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. For this very reason, peoples of other faiths have been afforded asylum, prosperity, and freedom of worship here. The general principles upon which the fathers achieved independence were the general principles of Christianity. I will avow that I believed and now believe that those general principles of Christianity are as eternal and immutable as the existence and attributes of God. It is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. This great book is the best gift God has given to man. We have been assured in the sacred writings that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. I firmly believe this. I also believe that without his conquering aid, we shall succeed in this political building no better than the builders of Babel. America has been a land flowing with milk and honey. It's been the envy of the world. It's been rich with an abundance of food, wealth, and prosperity. America has, by anyone's definition, been blessed by God. Do you think God has blessed America? Well, we're all still here, so I think he's blessed us so far. Oh, yes. Yes, he has. In what way? Ah, uh, just in freedom. God has blessed America in great ways. You know, I mean, just with the Founding Fathers acknowledging God, and he blesses that. I don't see why not. I mean, I think we've got it pretty good. I mean, even compared to a lot of the other countries, especially in the Middle East right now. I've, I've traveled all across different countries and I've seen a, a vast difference and, and yeah, absolutely. In other countries, we don't have that. Therefore, I think we are blessed. Do you think God has blessed America? I do. History attests to the fact that when America honored God, it was abundantly blessed by God. But let's look at our more recent history. Think back to 9-11 when our enemies killed 3,000 of our people. Where was God's blessing when that happened? Or think of the thousands of killer tornadoes, the hurricanes that at times line up off our shores in such numbers that we've run out of names to give them, the nonstop floods and droughts, and the onslaught of cancer increasing so rapidly. Why are these things happening in America? When I say that God is removing his hand from this country, I think that there are some evidences of that. Uh, we have seen them in a number of disastrous things, catastrophic things that have happened, such as Katrina, such as 9-11, such as the continuing war with terrorism in our country. And uh, in such ways as this, we see that God appears to be removing his hand of protection from this country. The thought that God could be responsible for the hurricanes, the disease, and the floods is unthinkable to us. And yet that's exactly what God promised he would do to nations that failed to honor and obey him. Did you catch that? In the scriptures, God said that he would cause these things to happen. We have to ask ourselves the question, who is in charge of the weather department anyway? And why is our country plagued with so much disease and suffering? We get a clue about why America is having trouble by looking at the history of Israel. The nation of Israel started out with God's blessing, and God promised that nation that if they would honor and obey him, they'd have a land flowing with milk and honey. He'd bless them with good health and prosperity. He'd bless their crops, their cattle and sheep, their newborn children, the weather and their economy. He also promised to defeat their enemies. But he warned if they disobeyed him, they would lose those blessings. They would instead be plagued with incurable diseases, destructive mold, drought, irrational fear, insanity and blindness. Their crops would be inundated with disease. Their children would not be born healthy. Their marriages would fall apart and the nation would fall into debt. God also warned that their enemies would overtake them and he'd scatter them throughout the nations. All this would happen because they refused to serve and fear the God who had blessed them with abundance. The Bible often speaks of God's dealing with sinful nations, such as Nineveh, Egypt and many others. Psalm 22 says of God, he is the ruler over the nations. The book of Job says he makes nations great and destroys them. He enlarges nations and he guides them. 
The Bible is timeless, therefore the Bible addresses not only the past but the present. Just as we know that salvation extends not only from the time that was given 2,000 years ago, it's current today, the same is true for nations. The Bible deals with individuals and nations then, it deals with individuals and nations now. The Bible tells us that whatever nation honors God, God will honor that nation. That's not for then, that's for then and now. The Bible also tells us that righteousness exalts the nation. That's not just for then, that's for then and now. The Bible tells us that blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. That applies today just like it applies every other generation. So the Bible is timeless on principles for nations. Let's look again at that list of plagues that God warned would come upon Israel if they turned their backs on him. And then compare that list to what's happening in the U.S. If you've suspected there's been an increase in cancerous diseases in America, you're right. Each year in the U.S., there are more than 189,000 new cases of prostate cancer and 200,000 cases of breast cancer. Over 2,300,000 Americans will get cancer in the next year, many of whom will be children. Why the increase? No one knows for sure. Cancer isn't our only dilemma. Back in 2005, healthcare spending in the United States reached two trillion, that's 2,000 billion dollars. That's $700 per person, more than eight times the $246 billion spent in 1980. We've become a very sick nation, and we're getting sicker. Toxic mold has suddenly become a very serious concern throughout the U.S. Recently, 50,000 new insurance claims involving mold were made in Texas alone. The increase in mold-related diseases is being called an epidemic, a national health crisis. ABC News recently published an article titled, More Than 60% of U.S. in Drought. As a direct result of drought, forest fires throughout the U.S. have increased. Why are we having all the catastrophes that are often referred to by the secular media as being of biblical proportions? According to the National Mental Health Association, 54 million Americans have mental disorders. Suicide rates are skyrocketing. 4 million Americans have Alzheimer's disease. 10 million are blind or partially blind. 55,000 of those are children. The USDA's National Animal Health Monitoring System estimated a 200 to 250 million dollar loss to the dairy industry alone because of disease. Again, no one can put their finger on why these things are happening. Today in America, one in five pregnancies end in a miscarriage. That's as many as 800,000 children who die in the womb before they're born. And that's not including abortions. In the United States of America, our national debt is currently more than nine trillion dollars. In case you didn't know, a trillion is a thousand billion. The National Center for Health Statistics recently released a report which found that 43% of first marriages end in separation or divorce. There are currently as many as 20 million illegal aliens in America. We have so many enemies in the world, from Al-Qaeda to Iraq to Iran to North Korea. If we want God to protect us, we must do that which is pleasing in His sight. When you have a worldview that starts with God, as even our nation states, one nation under God, we want to use it in terminology, we don't want to use it in reality. To be under God means that He sits as sovereign over our decisions. We want God for invocations and benedictions. We want Him as the bread, but not the meat in between. And uh, uh, He is insulted by that. He wants to be the, uh, the context uh, by which decisions are made, choices are made, and then He can be involved in bringing the, the result that we're all looking for.